Jess. Welcome back to the Not Carrie Bradshaw YouTube channel. In this video, I'm recapping the season finale of season one of First Wives Club. I still don't know when season two is starting. I know that we're getting one. I know that they've wrapped it. I know it's been filmed. I don't know when we're gonna get it. I'm no, I think it's gonna be sometime this year, but I'm anxiously awaiting it because I need to know what happens for our three heroes. This episode started off in a really rough place. All of the ladies were having a really hard time coming to terms with where they are and the fact that they, you know, everyone is a little bit too proud to reach out and to say, hey girl, I'm sorry, or y'all were right, or whatever. And we've all been in those positions where Either we're too ashamed because of our behavior or we, you know, to reach out or we're too proud to reach out. And it's like, uh-uh, they need to reach out to me first, you know, whatever the cause. So David has a new campaign manager who's really on top of things and scheduling things and, you know, wants to be really professional and wants to talk to Ari through David, even though Ari's in the room. And already the demands of David's campaign are encroaching on Ari's time and I was really proud of Ari for standing her ground and saying no I have something to do you guys are gonna have to move whatever you know this obligation is because I also have a life now and I was really proud of her for standing up in that and you know because it would have been really easy to fall back into old habits and just be like okay well you know his campaign comes first I know from it's from friends, not from personal experience, but that it can be really hard when you're a wife and a mother to put yourself first. So I was proud of Ari in that instance for doing that. Um, so Brie goes back to therapy solo. And I really love that there is this trend of having therapists on every show that I can think of where I have seen a therapist, it's been a black woman, but it's actually kind of challenging to find black female therapists in the real world, I find that really interesting. But the therapist asked Brie a really good question, which it, first of all, I was proud of Brie for going back to therapy by herself. And I was really proud, uh, um, not proud, obviously, that therapists should ask good questions, but I really liked the question that the therapist asked Brie when she said, do you want this marriage back or are you just afraid to be alone? And I think that that's important for people to ask themselves in a lot of situations. Do you want the thing that you're fighting for? Or are you just afraid of the unknown? Are you afraid of what may be on the other side of you leaving this job, leaving this relationship, you know, moving out or, you know, whatever the thing is that we sometimes fight to hold on so hard to, but you don't, what's your real reason? What's your purpose there? And is it like serving what your values are? And I really like that she gave Brie that assignment of, you know, instead of just looking to the future, look back to when you fell in love with Gary and see if you can still recognize the person that you fell in love with and if that feeling is still there. Because Brie expressed that she's afraid that she can't actually forgive Gary for cheating, which I think is quite reasonable. You know, um, you want your relationship to work out, but you don't know whether or not you're going to punish this person for the rest of your lives and go back into dysfunction because they messed up. So I love that they gave, that she gave Brie a little bit of homework, a little bit of sex in the city homework, but we'll get there. Um, so Ari meets with her old colleague. If you are new here, I have a little notebook. Keep track of everything. Um, <clears throat> so Ari has lunch with one of her old colleagues who works at the firm that Ari used to work at and Ari, her, her former colleague, Kat, you know, tells her, look, I've left. I've started my own firm. I would love to have you on. This is what I can pay you. And, oh, Lord, I see what you're doing in the lives of others. <laughs> um, you can tell Ari definitely misses having her own life. She definitely misses her own identity. And you know, I, I think that for a person who has those kinds of ambitions, it can be really hard to put them on the back burner for a husband and their political career. I mean, we can't all be Michelle Obama, you know, um, but thank God for Michelle Obama. So Derek is Stevie J. He's Stevie J. There's no way that they didn't in some way base that character on Stevie J. He's in the studio trying to serenade Hazel. And 
he is planning Hazel's tour where he's telling her, you know, he wants her to sing these old songs. And she's like, but my new stuff is charting. Like, I want to move forward. And he starts doing that manipulative type stuff that those kinds of men do where he's kind of demeaning what her current success is and kind of trying to take her back to a place where she needs to rely on him. And he's telling her that their drama, that their marriage falling apart is the reason why her career is thriving and why people are paying attention to her and why people are listening to the song. Like he wants credit for her success. And it finally becomes clear to Hazel that, oh, you're manipulating me. You just want to control me. You want me back under your thumb so that you can have control over me and over my career, which is so shitty because it's like you're with a whole other person and you see her doing well and you just don't want her to thrive without you. It's a really sick way to be. And tragically, there are a lot of people who operate like that in the world, but we shall overcome. Um, so I'm really happy that she came to her senses and walked out on that deal before it was solidified. So Ari tells David about the job offer and he tells her like, yeah, in two years when we leave Albany, you know, that will be great. And she's like, I never told you that I was going to move to Albany. I assumed that you would just commute, you know, like you would do, you know, whatever you needed to do in Albany, like as the governor or senator, I forget which one he's, he's running for, but, and that you would come back and stay here. And he's like, I didn't intend for us to live separately. And I'm like, how did y'all not have a final conversation about what the expectations were here. Like, I found that really puzzling. Like, y'all have been working towards this campaign all this time and didn't have a solid decision on where y'all were going to live. What? And so the expectation is for Ari to, you know, once again, put her goals and her desires on hold while he works towards his. Um... And also tells her there will be other opportunities. I was like, if you don't get the hell out of here. So Brie goes back to Washington Square Park, the NYU area. I love that area. And she gets two hot dogs because that's what her and Gary used to do after a night of drinking and the hot dog vendor that, you know, they used to buy hot dogs from is still there and still rude. And, you know, she goes and she sits down and she visualizes how Gary used to be back then. And it just so happens that Gary is also there with two hot dogs and doing the same thing. And this is so what Steve and Miranda did on Sex and the City meeting on the bridge. I still thought that it was cute. And I'm very happy that They've decided that they love each other enough to want to work on this marriage and to want to move forward with things. That just made my heart swell because I've been rooting for this couple to work through this issue the whole time. Even though I do say we need more examples of women walking away, I was happy that this worked out the way that it did and that Hazel is the one who walked away. So I will allow this one. And it's also fictional, so let's keep it cute. So... Hazel is day drinking with her former stepdaughter who has figured out where the bodies are buried in terms of how Derek has been stealing money from her and a number of people for years. And let's just remind everyone that Sasha is helping her because uh, Derek wouldn't even pay for her college and, you know, told her that he didn't have the money when she has seen evidence that he very clearly does. So all the girls link up at Bree's house. You know, it's awkward because the girls ain't seen each other. They've been fighting like they own love and hip hop. And, you know, everyone apologizes. They kiss and they make up and they plan a heist. I love a good heist. Ugh. I don't, I still don't think I could be a part of one. Too much pressure. But, um, basically they find out that, that Derek has been keeping two sets of books. And so he's been reporting one set of income to the IRS while having a whole other set of income. And a part of that has been him kind of like stealing money from Hazel. So um, they decide that it's not really in their best interest to report him to the feds because if they report him to the feds, Hazel won't get any of her money either because they'll freeze all of his assets. So Stella shows up to the studio. She's mad. She's not getting enough attention. You know, she's all up in Derek's face. And then they send two boys <laughs> to basically pretend that they are federal agents and arrest Derek. 
this is not the case. They basically kidnap and drug him. Bree injects him with a mild sedative. He, you know, wakes up in a warehouse where they roll out a, a Zoom screen, basically. And ha Hazel tells him, you're going to give me what I'm owed or I'm going to report your ass. And that's just gonna be it, and and you'll just go to jail. So it is it, gonna be what it's gonna be. This is a direct callback to the original source material, the First Wives Club movie. So I was really happy to see this. Um, and of course, Derek obliges. You know, um, he gets filmed getting kicked out of the penthouse, just like you know. Hazel got embarrassed. And so Hazel is on the billboard. She's doing really well. Her album is, is charting. She started this new female-led record label, and she's doing really well. I just want to say Black people really love an all-white function, even though The First Wives Club, the original movie, the source material, the ladies had an all-white party to celebrate their eventual victory. And, um, you know, in the movie, they celebrated starting, like, a home for, you know, women who needed safe, you know, safety and um, because their friend had, you know, a really rough go of things. Y'all watch the movie, but... Even though it was white people who had an all-white party, black people really love an all-white party. Like, we we just love it. And, I mean, we do look quite angelic and all-white. I'm not knocking it. I, too, love an all-white party. Um, and I'm just really happy for all the ladies. Everybody looks absolutely stunning, of course. And everything ends on a good note. Um, you know, David wins the campaign and... Um, Ari still takes the job, so I'm really excited to see in season two how that's going to play out. I'm sure there will be drama. Hijinks will ensue. Um, Hazel starts her own record label in order to foster artistry for young women who tend to really get taken advantage of a lot in the in the music industry. And I actually really wish that this is something that could happen in real life, like if some you know, some of the, the women in the industry could like partner together maybe to create a female led um, or I hate female, a women's led record label so that some of the really predatory behavior that we've been seeing, that we've been seeing our whole lives basically, but that's really coming to light can maybe be alleviated if there's more of a safe space for those artists to pursue their careers. I would like to see that happen in real life. Um, and Bree and Gary are back together. He's moved back in. And, you know, all's well that ends well. I really enjoyed this season. I enjoyed this series. Like I said, I cannot wait for season two. So um, whenever we get that premiere, I will be back to re to recap and review season two of First Wives Club. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about this first season, what you're hoping to see next season, whatever your predictions are, you know, thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. Drop down a comment, you know, share this with your homegirl, your homeboy, and I will see you guys soon. And also, if you like what you saw here today and want to help me to continue to create free content, become a patron of mine on my Patreon. The link is in the episode description, and I'll see you guys soon. And check out my other videos, too. Bye!